Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about code art and how to create it using JavaScript. So my tool of choice, my framework of choice is 3JS. Um, I love it. It's easy to set up, easy to get started with, and fun to play with. There's, and there's lots and lots of support and a great community around 3JS. So I recommend it. So um, let's let's talk about what it is, um, why it's amazing, and how to get started. Code art is creating images and animation and interactivity with code. It's it's awesome. You get to write something one time and see endless variations come from that. Um, I didn't expect this when I came out. I just uh, just emit some particles, have them all continue in a line, but they're pushed and pulled around by uh, a noise field. And each time I refresh it, I get a different set of colors and, and a different configuration. It's so cool. Um, yeah, why? What's the, what are some of the benefits of studying code art? Well, you uh, you develop your coding skills. You get more familiar with the way the language works, in this case JavaScript. You understand a framework which you can use in a variety of situations. You could create a website with 3.js. Um, you could create games. Um, you could create tutorials like I do. Or you could just create cool imagery and artwork. For this one, um, I, I'm really interested in the way that refraction works on the refraction material. S so I wanted to, to to, to kind of explore that and I ended up creating this thing that looks like a giant void or something like that and it's got these little particles that just float out of it. I just think it's really interesting and kind of abstract but that's that's what I like. I like abstraction. Um, you can develop visualization skills. You can develop a more intuitive understanding of mathematics. Um, I don't know if I've gained that but isn't this cool? Like just take a, a spirograph shape and then animate it and see what happens. Um, studying code art and creating code art can be a source of inspiration too. Um, you're exploring new ground, you may discover something that you can use in a different context um, in, your, in your daily work or, or whatever. Uh, in my case, uh, that hasn't really been the case but it has benefited me not just because I'm creating stuff that satisfies me and makes me feel good, but um, it, it just gives me a sense of accomplishment too, to focus my energies on creating stuff. Um, inspiration can come from anywhere. I, I saw a website with this texture on it and I thought that would be interesting if noise were kind of moving it around like it were a, a sheet in the wind or something like that. Um, I intend to work on this more. The interactivity right now is a little sparse. I'd like to see it m m affect the, the pattern more interestingly. Like maybe the colors would radiate out. TBD. Um, happy accidents occur that surprise you and, and you like them. And you like them. <laughs> what I was going to say. I like this one. Uh, this is the result of a narrow field of view for the camera. I've created this this collection of boxes and they're all arrayed in grid and because the camera is so narrow as I animate the, the grid back and forth it kind of cuts off. Isn't that cool? I totally didn't expect that to happen. Um, what else? You can learn how computer graphics work. Um, that's a skill that could be useful. Um, this inspiration came from an artist named Joshua Davis. Uh, I, I studied his work back in, oh gosh, 15 years ago when I was in New York City at the School of Visual Arts and he was, he was teaching a class there on, on interactivity and art with Flash. So this is inspired by that. I've got a bunch of random primitive shapes with colors picked from a collection of colors um, and then I slap this, this paintbrush texture on some sprites that float behind those shapes or in front of if I move the camera around. I just think it looks really cool. Um, there's endless variations 
um, this is a good example of endless variations. So as, each time I refresh, uh, uh, it just will have a different randomized setup. You can learn to see. I think that might be the most valuable aspect of studying code art and creative coding is you see something you really like you can you can learn what it is uh, uh, what are the components that make up that thing so, and, and you can figure out how to recreate it and then figure out how to expand on it and go different directions and explore very vari variations on it here's a variation on a wormhole effect I did a video on a couple of years ago. Uh, this one's all grayscale and there's lots more transparency variation and I just think it looks awesome. Especially when I kind of drag the mouse around inside the window, it creates this kind of turbulent effect. You can draw inspiration from classic artworks. Um, the paintings of artists like Brock and Picasso from the turn of the 19th to the 20th century inspired this. I really love the faceted look of some of the cubist artworks and that's what that's what inspired this thing. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I just think it's if, if you're you you I just think there's no downside to studying code art and and creative coding. It's really satisfying and edifying for me, and I really enjoy having this this channel to, to kind of give back um, and hopefully get more views. How do you get started with code art? Is to just start. Uh, if you have a computer, you have a connection to the internet, you have everything you and a desire, <laughs> then you have everything you need to create some code art. Um, I'm using a framework called 3JS. There's a, a wonderful uh, showcase website here that you can use as inspiration and also um, ways to get started easily. Let's see, get started right here. How to create a scene, how to set it up. Also, I've created a video on how to get started. So, yeah. You, the internet is full of examples of uh, CG over the decades. Um, of, of movies with cool visual effects. I recently saw Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and whoa, the style of, and, the, and just the, the energy of that movie is amazing. Uh, and I hope to find a way to explore that in my code art. <clears throat> also, practice every day. Um, if you're really wanting to improve, uh, doesn't take, uh, you know, you don't have to commit your life to it, but if you can, that's great too. But practice every day, even if it's just a little bit each day, to continuously develop and um, build upon uh, and practice your art. I went to school, uh, music school, and one of the artists came and said, um, it's kind of like, inspiration is kind of like waiting for a bus. You need to be at the bus stop to catch the bus. So you need to be creating your art in order to catch that inspiration. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, leave comments below if you have some suggestions. I'd love to hear them. And thanks so much for coming through. And until next time, cheers, bye.